today honors geometry November 10th and 11th we are beginning the next chapter chapter 4 and chapter 4 deals primarily with triangles um, so let's get some terminology out of the way um, a triangle of course you know it has three sides and it's formed by three non-collinear points now non-collinear that means they're not on the same line um, and all three of the points can't be linear so for example if you had three collinear points they would be like this and there's no way to form a triangle like that but two of the three could be collinear and then you put the third one so it's not collinear so I'm going to draw a line or segments connecting those three points um, and you always name those points because they are points with capital case letters so this is a triangle at point A, point B, and point C are non-collinear. Um, they have three angles, angle A, angle B, and angle C. Three sides, side AB, side BC, and side AC. Of course, those are segments. Um, the points, points A, B, and C, because they are at the uh, intersection of two of the segments of a triangle those are called vertices uh, vertex is singular so we can look at vertex A vertex B or vertex C and vertices is plural so the vertices are A B and C okay so vertices is plural vertex is singular um, this is a triangle of course and to name that triangle you put a little triangle symbol and then you pick a letter that you want to start with it doesn't really matter which letter you pick just pick a letter I'm gonna I usually start with the first letter in the alphabet that's represented on that triangle so triangle A not triangle A sorry point A um, and then you name the triangle going clockwise around the triangle so going clockwise the next vertex you get to is B and then keep going clockwise the next vertex you get to is C so this is triangle ABC we could have also named that triangle BCA or triangle CAB um, so long as you're going clockwise around the triangle you're fine and please make sure that you use capital case letters for the uh, vertices um, there is a phrase that you will hear quite often and um, I'm going to use this phrase now to describe adjacent sides side AC segment AC and segment BC are adjacent um, they're, they're, um, they come in pairs so segment AB and segment BC are adjacent um, we can also talk about angles being adjacent angle A and angle B are adjacent again they come in pairs angle A and angle C are adjacent um, we can also talk about um, sides that are opposite so a side that is opposite angle A okay so angle A is right here the side that's opposite angle A means it's not right next to it it's opposite angle A and that's side BC segment BC or you can talk about a side that is adjacent oh my goodness adjacent to any of the angles let's go with angle B this time so a side that's adjacent to angle B is a side you can pick either side AB or side BC um, you can also talk about um, a side that's included so side AC 
is included between angle A and angle C. Um, let's see, did I get everything? I talked about a side that's opposite an angle, side that's adjacent to an angle, sides that are included. Okay, so I think that's got all that vocabulary taken care of. Obviously the stuff inside the triangle, that's called the interior, and the stuff outside the triangle is called the exterior. Um, I think that's got all the terminology there now. Okay, now, um, we also need to be able to name triangles, and triangles have first and last names, just like you have a first and a last name. The first name is going to come from the angles. Okay, now we're going to talk about the different types of triangles using the first name. Okay, an acute triangle is a triangle whose angles are all less than 90 degrees. All three of the angles are less than 90 degrees. An obtuse triangle is a triangle that has exactly one angle greater than 90 degrees. A right triangle is a triangle that has exactly one right angle. And then there's one more, it's called equilateral. E-Q-U-I-L-A-T-E-R-A-L. -E Please make sure that you can spell that. E-Q-U-I-L-A-T-E-R-A-L. -E An equilateral triangle is a triangle that has three congruent angles. Okay, so those are the names that you need to be familiar with for the triangles when you name them by angle. Those are their first names. And then the last name comes from um, their sides. So they're named by sides. Okay, now what I mean by that is, for example, a scalene triangle, S-C-A, that didn't look like a C, sorry. S-C-A-L-E-N-E, -E. that didn't look like an E, S-C-A-L-E-N-E. -E. A scalene triangle is a triangle that has no congruent sides. An isosceles triangle, make sure you can spell it, I-S-O-S-C-E-L-E-S, -E -E an isosceles triangle is a triangle that has at least two sides congruent. And an equilateral triangle is a triangle that has all three sides congruent. Okay, so a lot of times people will misunderstand the isosceles definition. They think it's two sides, just exactly two sides, but technically it's at least two sides. So an equilateral triangle is also isosceles. An isosceles triangle is not always equilateral, though. Um, so understand the difference between those. Okay, um, if you could please, we're going to draw a right triangle. And I'm going to label that A. 
And I'm going to put some markings on there. No, I'm not. No, I'm not. The side opposite the right angle is called the hypotenuse. Please make sure you can spell that. H-Y-P-O-T-E-N-U-S-E. -E. The sides that form the right angle, those are called legs. Then draw an isosceles triangle. It is acute. The side that's not congruent is called the base. The two sides that are congruent are called legs. Theorem 4.1-1. And um, so I'm going to tell you this theorem. We're formally stating this, but you probably already know this. The angles of a triangle have a sum of 180 degrees. Okay, now we've talked about in geometry, I mean, you, you knew that theorem already. But anyway, we talked about in geometry, we've talked about definitions. We've talked about the undefined terms, and from the definitions and undefined terms, we get postulates. Those are things that we assume to be true. From the postulates, we get those things called theorems, and those are things that we can prove. Now, from theorems, we can have these things called corollaries. So it's just kind of a little branch off of the theorem. So this has two else. So this has um, a this theorem has a corollary for it. This is corollary 4.1-2, and it says. Um, well, before I tell you what it says, um, let's look at this I, acute triangle that I drew here. So I'm going to label this um, D E F. So there's three angles. Angle D is interior, angle E is interior, angle F is interior. Okay, now those are interior angles. At each one of the interior angles, there exist two exterior angles. And I'm going to show you what the exterior angle looks like by extending segment DF. This is one of the exterior angles at angle D. I could draw another exterior angle right here, but I don't want to do that because it's confusing. Okay, so um, let's say that I tell you that this angle, angle F, the interior angle, is 50 degrees. The interior angle and the exterior angle, that's a linear pair. And we know that linear pairs are supplementary. So that would mean that this exterior angle would have to equal 130 degrees. Okay, now think about this. If angle F is 50 degrees, and the angles of a triangle have to add up to be 180 degrees, then what does that mean that angle D and angle E have to add up to B? So I've got two angles left over, one of them is 50 degrees. The other two have to add up to be 130, which is the same as that exterior angle. So what this corollary says is that the exterior angle is equal to the sum of the two remote interior angles. Okay, so two remote interior angles. If you're looking at this exterior angle on angle F, remote means it's far away. So angle D and angle E are the remote interior angles. It's not right next to angle F. It's remote, it's far away, and it's on the interior. 
So this exterior angle is equal to the sum of these two remote interior angles. Okay, then there's another corollary that can come off of this theorem. Corollary 4.1-3, which states that, um, well, I'm not going to tell you that just yet. Okay, so in this triangle, the right triangle, I've got this 90 degree angle. So what could you say about angle S and angle A? Okay, the angles of a triangle have to add up to be 180. So if 90 degrees is used right here, that means angle S and angle A have to both add to be 180. So what does that mean then about those two angles, angle S and angle A? If they add to be 90 degrees, that means they are complementary. So corollary 4.1-3 says that the acute the two acute angles of a right triangle are complementary. Okay, now um, I'm going to do some examples as my dog tries to get me to play with her ducky. Number one, okay, so I have these three, these, this triangle with those three angles marked. And um, we have to figure out what the value of x is. I don't know if you can see this. This is a 13x. Let me write that a little bit clearer. 13x. Okay, so these are my three interior angles. Angel, hush. Um, and they have to add to be 180 degrees because they are the interior angles of a right triangle. So you add these three angles up. So you write 13x plus 15x, no that's not 15, that's a 5. 5x plus 4 plus 4x has to add to be 180. So let's add up our like terms. 18x plus 4x is 22x plus 4 is equal to 180. Subtract the 4. 22x is equal to 176. So that means x has got to be 8. So if you know all three angles, you add them all up and set it equal to 180. Okay, number 2, let's say that we've got a different shape here. And this angle over here is 2x plus 26. And um, it's a right angle x. Okay, and you're asked to find out what the value of x is. So this is an exterior angle. The exterior angle is equal to the sum of the two remote interior angles. So you, you would write 2x plus 26 is equal to x plus 90. And then you can probably solve that equation from there. So just remember that if it's an exterior angle, it's equal to the sum of the two remote interior angles. Don't make it harder than that. Okay, then number three. Okay, so number three, you're supposed to find the measures of angle one, two, and three. Okay, so on the left side, you have this right triangle. One of the angles is 54 degrees. Oh, the other angle is 90 degrees. Okay, well, this angle plus 54 plus the measure of angle one has got to add to be 180 degrees, or this is a right triangle. 
the angle 1 and the 54 degrees are complementary. So 54 plus the measure of angle 1 has got to equal 90 degrees. Then you would subtract 54, so the measure of angle 1 is equal to 36 degrees. So you know that this is 36 degrees. Now let's find the measure of angle 2. Okay, this is a linear pair. So I have a linear pair. Linear pairs are supplementary. One of the angles is 90 degrees, so what's the other angle? 90 degrees. Please make sure you're using correct notation. Put the M in front of your angle symbol and put a degree sign on there. Okay, so now I've got this right angle. So I've got another right triangle sitting over here on the right side. And these two angles have to add to be 90 degrees because they're complementary. So 52 plus the measure of angle 1 or I'm sorry, measure of angle 3, is equal to 90 degrees. Subtract the 52, so the measure of angle 3 is equal to 38 degrees. Okay, so keep in mind all of these theorems as you are working through your homework. Um, your assignment, I want you to do, let me see here. Let me write it down for you. You need to do page 162 and 163, and you're going to do numbers 2 through 12 evens, um, 18 through 48 evens, and show your algebra process. Starting, I believe it starts with number 40 that you have to start showing the algebraic process. Okay, if you need help, let me know. Otherwise, have a great day.